Welcome to the 40th video of the Amateur Extra License Study. We are on sub-element 8 Charlie, and this is one of the more difficult ones. Because I don't have a lot of explanation, there's just some memorization for these. What is Quadrature Amplitude Modulation, or QAM? This is transmission of data by modulating the amplitude of two carriers of the same frequency but 90 degrees out of phase. And this is sort of how it looks uh, on a, if you were to look at it in an oscilloscope. And the way that the bits work out is all based on the phase angle. So if you look down here, we'll look at the eye chart. There's another name for the eye chart, too, and I just looked it up. It's called a constellation diagram. But this is using those phase angles to make up bits. So this is a 16 QAM. So there's 16 different amplitude and phase levels. So it all goes on the amplitude and the phase. All right, so QAM, amplitude modulating the amplitude of two carriers 90 degrees out of phase. What is the definition of symbol rate in digital transmission? The symbol rate is simply the rate at which the waveform changes to convey information. Why should the phase of a PSK signal be changed at the zero crossing of the RF signal? And that is to minimize bandwidth. Zero crossing is where a lot of distortion can happen. The, uh, uh, and not so much distortion, but it does take up a little bit of bandwidth when it crosses that zero point. So any, anything that you're looking to, uh, the phase crossing is going to be to minimize bandwidth. So that's just one of those you have to memorize. What technique minimizes the bandwidth of a PSK31 signal? And that is use of sinusoidal data pulses. So a sine wave is pure. If it is a square wave, then it's not pure. So the only answer is sinusoidal data pulses for this one. What it, and another memorization, but I will show you something in just a minute. What is the approximate bandwidth of a 13 words per minute international Morse code transmission? And that is about 52 hertz. Now that would be super duper ideal. But if you will go over to my friend, Alan at Tech, W2AEW, he's got a nice video of bandwidth of CW. It's a function, he shows it as a function of speed and the rise and fall time of your signal. Now, if you have an FT891, I think the ICOM 7300, you can change the rise and fall time. I think the majority of them, the default is for milliseconds. And if you look around 15 on his words per minute, it was uh, with a four millisecond rise time, he had about 250 hertz of the, um, the bandwidth. Now there was another website where you could play around with key clicks and all that stuff. If you Google or use whatever dog pile, Yahoo, whatever you choose to use to search the internet. You can look up some websites that have some things that you can play around with to look at the bandwidth. If you have key clicks or chirp, then your bandwidth is going to be a lot more, and you can view that bandwidth on your scope. Now, his rise and fall times, he's got a very square wave right here. Remember that it's that rise that really gets you. And he explains how all of this works at the beginning, uh, showing you right here a square wave and the fundamental and then your odd harmonics. The steeper the wall, the, the wider your bandwidth. So this is your bandwidth right here. So that's a lot to say a little. 52 hertz is going to be what you want to remember for the 13 word per minute 
Morse code transmission. If you've done FT8, you know that in WSJTX you get a 50 hertz slot for your signal. You should be able to remember 50 hertz for an FT8 signal. What is the bandwidth of a 4800 hertz frequency shift 9600 or 9600 baud ASCII FM transmission? Just remember it's 15.36 kilohertz. So that's approximately, it, it, it's really close to 9600 plus 4800. Uh, if that helps you remember that, I hope it does. How does ARQ accomplish error correction? An ARQ it is asking if there's an error, or it gives error correction, and if on the receiving end an error is detected, then it asks you to send it again. So it's sort of like saying, uh, what'd you say? I'm sorry, what'd you say? That's what ARQ is. It's, what'd you say? If errors are detected, a retransmission is requested. That's an ARC, ARQ. Which digital code allows only one bit to change between sequential code values? And that is the gray code. Gray code only allows one bit to change between sequential code values. That's gray code. Again, you can look up gray code if you want to. It's a lot of research for one question. Gray code, one bit. How can data rate be increased without increasing your bandwidth? And that is to use a more efficient digital code. So bandwidth, efficiency. What is the relationship between symbol rate and baud they're exactly the same baud is telling you how many changes per second you might have symbol rate is how many changes per second you're going to have so symbol rate and baud they're the same that's easy one to remember what factors affect the bandwidth of a transmitted cw signal the keying speed and shape factor that's your rise and fall time most rigs the rise and fall time are not exactly square edges they're going to be a little more rounded as they ramp up which is going to lessen the bandwidth the closer to a true sine wave that it is the better so keying speed and shape factor i think that if alan had 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 a um and he he kind of shows it it's a little more rounded here but it's still almost brick wallish uh but he does manage to get that uh bandwidth down below 250 but i think that if you had more of a sine wave getting getting there uh a shorter rise time I think you would have noticed that the uh, the bandwidth would have been a little less, but that's for you to remember. The keying speed and shape factor, that's what affects the bandwidth. What is described by the constellation diagram of a QAM or QPSK signal? And that's the possible phase and amplitude states for each symbol. And I just got a bunch of pictures here to show you. These are all different types of constellation diagrams. I can't even imagine what that would be. <laughs> Probably Wi-Fi or something. Uh, you got the devil. Anyways, these are showing you some of the possible constellation diagrams. But the possible phase and amplitude for the states of each signal. Now we're talking about mesh network, and I haven't quite gotten into mesh networks. I um, have some stuff laying around the house that I could probably do this with, but what type of addresses do nodes have in a mesh network? And a mesh network can be thought of as an internet, without internet or with internet. 
You might just be exchanging data between somebody sitting across the kitchen table from you without internet, or you might use the internet. It is internet protocol, that IP. So they're going to have IP addresses. They use routers just with modified software on them, or uh, yeah, software or firmware. What technique do individual nodes use to form a mesh network? And that is going to be discovery and link establishment protocols. Now, like I said, this was a tougher section. I think the answers, there, there's quite a few more answers in this section that you have to just memorize and know. Good luck with that. <laughs> I've tried my best throughout this series to give you a way to memorize a formula that would knock out quite a few possible questions. But in this one, there's really nothing that I can offer to help memorize it other than mnemonics for that and thinking of things in another way. So I, I, take another look at it. Go through the ones that you, you know you've got, like 52 hertz for the international Morse code 50 hertz for FT8 because if you haven't if you're an FT8 hater guess what you're probably not going to know that it's 50 hertz um, don't hate on FT8 okay it's just another mode the uh, ASCII transmission for 9600 baud that uses a bandwidth of 4800 hertz or what is the bandwidth bandwidth sorry of a 4800 hertz frequency then you're looking at 15 point, uh, just round it up in your head, 15.4 kilohertz. It, it's not going to be this. It's not going to be that. You know you're going to add them, so it can't be that. And ARC, gray code, one bit only. Efficiency, these are the same. Hopefully you go check out W2AEW, uh, Allen at Tech. That's his... Uh, Twitter handle, by the way, but or X. King speed and shape factor. Phase and amplitude states are in the constellation diagram. I did show you pictures of that. Maybe use use your photographic memory. Take a picture. Don't run out of film. And IP discovery and link establish protocols. So this has been a tougher section. I, it, it's crazy. Go go onto my um, channel. Go to the community and you can search on my thoughts on the extra exam that I aren't gonna put, I'm not going to put in this video, but it is out there in the community. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel. You don't have to have the bell enabled, okay? That's only if you want to get notified that I upload another video, but hey, I, I know on my channel, sometimes videos are relevant to a lot of people, and sometimes they're relevant to probably only me. All right, this has been enough fun for this video. We have 10 left. We have 10 videos left, and maybe only nine. Let's go.